Visit the official Linux Mint download page, link in the description. In the downloads page, you will find three editions available, Cinnamon, Mate, and XFCE. Simply click on the edition of your choice, and you will be redirected to the respective page. On this page, you will have the option to download Linux Mint as an ISO image either directly or through a torrent. After the download is finished, you can proceed to create a bootable medium by flashing the ISO image onto an external drive. Go to the Etcher website and download the Windows version of Etcher, link in the description. Once the download is complete, run the installer and follow the on-screen instructions to install Etcher on your Windows computer. Plug in the USB flash drive that you want to use as the bootable medium into an available USB port on your computer. Please note that any existing data on the USB drive will be erased during this process, so make sure to back up any important files before proceeding. In Etcher, click on the Flash from File button and browse to the location where you downloaded the Linux Mint ISO file. Etcher should automatically detect the connected USB drive. If not, click on the Select Target button and choose the correct USB drive from the list of available devices. Double check that you have selected the correct ISO image and USB drive. Once you are certain, click on the Flash button to start the process. Etcher will show the progress of the flashing process. Wait for it to complete. This may take a few minutes depending on the size of the ISO file and the speed of your USB drive.
Once the process is finished, Etcher will notify you. Safely eject the USB drive from your computer. Congratulations! You have successfully created a Linux Mint bootable USB using Etcher in Windows OS. You can now use this bootable USB to install Linux Mint on your desired system. This video focuses on systems that utilize the GPT partition scheme. Before proceeding, it is essential to confirm that your disk is configured with this partition style. To determine the partition scheme of your disk in Windows, first, open PowerShell on your Windows system. Execute the following command within the PowerShell window. By examining the output, you can see that the last section displays the disk partition type. In my case, the partition style is GPT. This video is tailored for systems running in UEFI or Unified Extensible Firmware Interface Mode. To ensure compatibility with the dual boot setup, verify that your machine is set to run in UEFI mode. Click on the Start menu and search for System Information. Open the System Information application from the search results. Look for the BIOS mode field in the System Summary. If the BIOS mode is set to UEFI, it indicates that your system is using UEFI. If the BIOS mode is set to Legacy, it indicates that your system is using BIOS. As evident from the video, it is apparent that my system is configured with UEFI as the BIOS mode. The next step is to disable Secure Boot. While it is generally possible to install Linux Mint with Secure Boot enabled without any issues, there are certain situations where compatibility problems may arise. Open the Start menu and go to Settings. In the Settings menu, search for Recovery. Under the Recovery options, click on Advanced Startup and then choose Restart Now. Within the Advanced Startup options, locate and select Troubleshoot. Next, choose Advanced Options. And then select UEFI Firmware Settings. Click on Restart to enter the UEFI or BIOS settings. After the system restarts, you will be directed to the UEFI slash BIOS settings. It is worth mentioning that the appearance and layout of the BIOS slash UEFI window may differ depending on the manufacturer of your desktop or laptop. For instance, in Dell laptops, you can usually locate the option to enable or disable secure boot in the boot configuration section. To disable secure boot, simply toggle the switch to the off position. Confirm the action by selecting yes to disable secure boot and save the profile. Finally, press the exit button to restart the machine, applying the saved settings. To check the status of secure boot from within Windows, press the Windows key R to open the Run dialog box. Type msinfo32 in the dialog box and press Enter. The system information window will open. Look for the secure boot state entry. If the state is displayed as off, it indicates that secure boot is currently disabled on your system. In this step, we will create a dedicated partition specifically for installing Linux Mint. To begin, open the Disk Management utility from the Start menu. In this example, there is a single 200GB disk where all the available space is currently allocated to the Windows C drive. To proceed with the Linux Mint installation, it is recommended to allocate at least 100GB of space for Linux. This will ensure sufficient room for your personal files and applications, primarily within the home directory. To create free space for Linux Mint installation, first, right-click on the C drive in the Disk Management Utility. Select the Shrink Volume option from the Context menu. Enter the desired size to shrink the C drive in megabytes. After shrinking the C drive, I now have approximately 100 gigabytes of free space available for the installation of Linux Mint.
Connect the USB device with the Linux Mint ISO image to your computer. And in the Windows menu, search for UEFI and then click on Change Advanced Startup Options. Go to the Advanced Startup option and click on Restart Now button. On the next screen, click on Use a Device. Recognize the USB disk with its name and size. It may also be displayed as UEFI USB device. From the Grub Boot Loader menu, select the first option to boot into Linux Mint in live mode. During the installation, you will be prompted to install the multimedia codec. So you need to connect to the internet if you wish to install the same. Once you are in live mode, keep an eye out for the highlighted icon representing network connectivity on the system tray. If you have connected an Ethernet cable, the network will be automatically detected. For wireless networks, you will see a list of available connections to choose from. You can launch the installer in two ways. Click the Install Linux Mint disk icon from the desktop or open the menu and type Install Linux Mint and launch it. Choose the language of your choice and click Continue to proceed to the next step. Choose the keyboard layout and click Continue. In the installation process, the next step involves installing multimedia codecs. These codecs are necessary for playing various video and formats and ensuring browser compatibility. It is recommended to select the checkbox for installing multimedia codecs and click Continue to proceed to the next step. In this step, you will configure the partitions using the space reclaimed from the Windows C drive. We will proceed with the manual partitioning method by selecting something else. Now, you will be presented with the partition table and a few additional options for customization. Let us create home partition. To create the home partition select the remaining free space allocated for Linux Mint installation and click on the plus symbol to add a new partition. In the dialog box that appears, allocate the desired size for the home partition. This will be the space where your personal files and data will be stored, so allocate enough space according to your needs. Similarly, create boot and root partitions. Allocate an appropriate size for the boot partition. A recommended size is around 500 megabytes to 1 gigabyte. Allocate the desired size for the root partition. It should be large enough to accommodate the Linux Mint system files and applications. You successfully create the home, boot, and root partitions for the Linux Mint installation. Click on the Install Now button, and a prompt will appear, asking for confirmation to write the partition changes to the disk. In this step, choose the geolocation and click Continue to move to the next step. In this step, create a username and password for your Linux Mint account. The Linux Mint installation process will now start. You can continue using the operating system without affecting the ongoing installation process. Feel free to use Linux Mint as the installation progresses.
Once the installation is completed, you have the option to either restart the machine or continue testing the operating system in live mode. I am going to restart it. After the system reboots, the Grub bootloader will load and present you with the options to choose between Linux Mint and Windows Boot Manager. Once again, restart the machine and from the grub screen, select Windows Boot Manager to verify if everything is functioning properly on the Windows side. If you encounter no issues while using both Windows and Linux Mint, then the dual boot process has been successfully set up and is working as expected.